Mid caps outperform larger pairs even as stocks swing between gains and losses. Investors fret over the inflation and the interest rate trajectory. IT capital goods gain while energy and healthcare sulks. Acquisition news boosts Samvardhana Madhusan and Lumax Auto. Samvardhana Madhusan strikes a deal to buy SaaS Auto System uh, Technic, a global cockpit module and EV solutions vendor for 540 million euros. Lumax Auto surges as it is set to buy 75% stake in IAC International Automotive India. Both deals are seen as EPS accretive. Bharat Dynamics and KEC International gain on large order wins. Bharat Dynamics fires up on a $255 million export order. The stock trades ex-dividend. KEC International bags projects worth 3,000 crore rupees across business verticals, taking their order intake to 18,000 crore so far this year. NMDC Steel shares hit 5% upper circuit intraday post listing. The government is looking to divest over 50% of its holding in the demerged entity. Bullish management commentary boosts RPG Life. The management tells CNBC TV18 they continue to grow faster than the market. They expect volume growth to be in double digits in the fourth quarter. Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Reema Tendulkar and with me is Sonal Bhutra. And markets have slipped, you know, in fact, we're at the low point. The benchmark indices have dipped into the red. Again, uh, the cuts are not very deep. Even the gains at the beginning of the session were not very high. But the trajectory is very clear that the market has been sold into through the course of the trading session. The opening, uh, the first one hour was on the flatter side, but with a positive bias. But subsequently, things have gone southwards for our markets. mid -cap so far are actually managing to hold up in the green, and their trajectory is very different. The mid-cap index is at the high point of the day. And that was a different picture last week right so if we look at what is contributing to losses on the nifty today we have reliance industries around 14 points the hdfc twins too they are losing big time so hdfc hdfc bank that should be on your radar and banking names they are really the ones which are putting a lot of pressure as far as the nifty moves are concerned in trade today uh, so bank index uh, that one is down six tenths of percent that's the biggest uh, loser in terms of benchmark indices as well nifty it on the flip side is the one which is gaining some ground in trade so it's a good time to get a technical check on the markets we we have uh, Rahul Sharma of Equity 99 Advisors joining us for just that. Uh, Rahul, uh, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, what's your take on the Nifty at the day's low right now? And mid caps on the flip side, they are the ones outperforming today. Yes, good afternoon, Sonal, and thank you for having me on the show. Definitely, see, there is a lack of confidence in the market, especially for the uh, for the indices. We are not able to make any decisive move or, or with, with confidence uh, over the indexes. But... Uh, you said uh, that some of the mid caps are doing really nice, uh, uh, and specifically, uh, right at this current position, mid caps and small caps are looking really good. But then, uh, still, market is in pressure. Whenever we see index going towards on the higher band side, say like 18,100 or 200 levels, uh, from there we see profit booking and lack of confidence uh, in the market. And for, for, for the same reason, that now uh, right now market is trading below 17,900 levels. I think for Nifty particularly, 17,830 and 800 levels are the good support levels on the immediate basis. And on the upside, 18,000 and 18,200 will remain strong supply zone or resistances as we call. And Bank Nifty on the similar side, 40,770 or 40,600 are behaving as a strong support uh, levels on the immediate basis followed by 40,500, 40, which is a bigger uh, support level. So on the upside, 41,300 or 41,500 will remain as a strong resistance or a supply zone on Bank Nifty. And uh, Rahul, afternoon. What about individual stock recommendations? Yes, definitely, Rima. There is like uh, huge, uh, huge potentials going on, and I think stock-specific uh, 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 approach is the right approach for the current market. Right now, in my selection, uh, one, one stock is from Metal and one is from Auto. From the Metal side, I'm picking General Stainless Steel Limited, uh, which is trading near 265 levels. See, this uh, particular stock, uh, although Metal Pack is not doing good today, but this particular stock has been consolidating for a really long time. And Metal Pack, as it is not doing good, but this JSL on technical charts is looking very strong. It has formed a good base and now getting ready uh, uh, to get a good upside move. There is a horizontal line breakout, MACD, RSI, both are on positive side, trading above all important moving averages. So the target levels for General Stainless Limited uh, will be 280 
and the stop loss should be kept at 257 if you are taking position at the current levels oh. second selection from auto pack is pvs motors which is trading around 1135 levels uh, see the charts are really positive it has formed good base near 1000 levels and since then it has been uh, giving us a uh, good higher top higher bottom formation on on intraday charts i think uh, this particular stock is ready to go and touch 1200 levels again so uh, for the target of 1200 i think you should buy tvs motors at current levels keeping stop loss at 1100 for a positional view all right rahul thank you so much for joining us with that let's move on this is our segment mid cap movers uh, we have vivek with us as always to take us through the mid caps that are moving around in trade vivek what do you have for us Well, good afternoon. You know, it's another session where we're seeing a outperformance as far as the broader end of the markets are concerned. Uh, so, first few names, you know, these are some of the stocks that's been added, to, you know, to the FTSE indices after the semi-annual index review, and these are the names, you know, that will have some impactful, meaningful, high-impact buying. So, which is why we're seeing names like Kalyan Jewelers, Sera Sanitary, where Truvani Turbines and Patanjali Woods doing well in today's trading session. Moving on, you know, one particular, you know, mark, uh, market pack that's doing quite well is the Auto Ang pack on the back of M&A related. news you're seeing quite a bit of activity and with strong volumes in lumax auto tech as well as precol and jtekt india also is doing quite well up almost 8% in the session today some of the stocks that are seeing you know very strong volume action especially when you're comparing it to the last 5 day to 10 day average uh, uh, names like ekia energy you know the stock continues its outperformance or recovery after the strong uh, you know sell off that it saw sumitomo chemicals up today on very strong volumes star health as well as navin florin up after a brokerage upgrade on the other hand some of the stocks that are seeing quite a bit of sell off today uh, first is tcl and clothing you know volatile ride as far as this name is concerned data patterns today down on strong volumes rainbow medical has actually seen a little bit of a recovery after a very sharp knock that it took in the first hour of the trading session and sun pharma advanced to down almost 4% in the session today thank you very much for that get into a break on the other side we'll invite ravi chavla the md and ceo of gulf oil lubricants promised uh, let's talk about gulf oil lubricants which is the stock in focus today posted a good set of numbers in the third quarter even as margins saw some pressure uh, down about 120 basis points on a year on year basis the management says they delivered double digit volume growth in the coal lubricants business while the agri and two wheeler segment was impacted uh, let's uh, understand the demand trends now in quarter 4 ravi chavla the md and ceo of the company is joining us now mr chavla good afternoon thank you so much for joining us uh, well in quarter 3 you did indicate that b2b was strong however b2 We continue to face tepid rural conditions as far as demand is concerned. Can you tell us what is the situation right now, and what is the split between B two B and B two C revenues? Uh, well, as you rightly said, uh, quarter three for us has been uh, good, robust growth. We continue to grow two to three times the industry. Uh, rural demand, yes, it has the agri products which should pick up in the coming season, and we are preparing for that. Number of initiatives we do in terms of service camps, etc. So I think overall uh, quarter three the ratio of B two B B two C was normally it's sixty forty, but slightly one or two percent below that for the B two C business. Uh, all these segments are doing well except the rural slightly, as we mentioned, and motorcycle oils. Uh, the prices have gone up, so a bit of. Uh, you know we have announced two products which are at the value end so i think all these initiatives will help us to kind of uh, bounce back and continue our uh, robust uh, two to three times industry growth hmm. uh, so you planning to grow two to three x the industry you said that you're hopeful the retail will pick up uh, which was a bit subdued in q3 in january in the first half of february how have the b2c sales been have you already seen a pick up and what would be the comparison say quarter on quarter in terms of an improvement So normally the uh, second and third month on the quarters do well because the quarter closing we have a lot of distributor initiatives, and as I mentioned, you know rural is about ten percent of our volumes uh, that will pick up once the agri season comes up. So we are seeing uh, as as Jan is the first month, obviously uh, as I mentioned, second and third months things will do well. Uh, so we hope this is a strong quarter. The March end, a lot of the incentives for the trade plus the demand picks up. uh commercial vehicle oils are doing very well b2b is doing very well uh passenger car where we have a low market share is doing very well for us and uh double digit growth i think is again what we are looking at and the industry is growing about 3 to 4% so it should be a good quarter yes the margins are 
under a bit of pressure because uh, though base oil has stabilized, uh, we feel the additives in some of the foreign exchanges there where we import the base oil. But things are steady now, so it should be a, a strong quarter closing the year. Strong quarter, 18% volume growth in nine months. What will you end the year with? Also, because you're talking about a strong qu uh, quarter and demand as well. Are there any price hikes in the offing as well? What is the outlook for FY23 margins and revenue growth? Well, normally now the prices have stabilized. So I think uh, it should be that, uh, you know, from here, the prices are, have reached uh, the peak in terms of costs. And uh, while we look at next year, again, with uh, strong fundamental things happening in terms of investment in infrastructure, uh, all the automotive industry set to grow. Uh, we would look at the industry growing again, three to 4%, maybe a bit higher in the retail market. And as we have done, uh, the outlook is to grow two to three times that and try to get a band of margin, which I would say currently, uh, we know it's been under some pressure, but this should go up, uh, you know, at least look at 12 to 14% going in the next few quarters. And then uh, obviously it's based on competition and other things. So we hope that we can uh, get this trajectory going for us. I think battery did about 60 to 61 crores of revenues in Q3. Uh, could you give us an indication? Is this the run rate we should expect going ahead? What are the triggers? Uh, sorry, I missed your question. You, On batteries, uh, can you tell us uh, uh, the game plan and how you can scale it up and yeah, so margins? Yeah, so batteries for us is is a, is a business we have leveraged our brand and our distribution. We do about 100 crores revenue in a year. And uh, we are also looking at local manufacturing of the batteries so that we can improve our margins here. So that project is underway and in a couple of months that should uh, that should happen. Okay, so that's about batteries. EV fluids, you have tied up with three OEMs, yeah. looking at yeah. other two OEMs as well. Uh, what Has it already started contributing or will it contribute now? And how big of an opportunity here is? You have 200 rupees uh, in terms of cash and books. Will you be putting it in the EV fluids business or what is the plan here? So EV fluids is a natural extension of the lubricant business. Uh, most of the uh, EVs are coming in have transmission and uh, the, you know the creases and the brake fluids. So that's a natural sort of extension, EV fluids. Uh, we have tied up with three OEMs to start with. Uh, Switch Mobility, which makes buses, Alti Green, which makes three-wheeler commercial, and Piaggio, which is into three-wheeler space. So these are three tie-ups we have had already. It's going to be a small percentage of the current volume as it's evolving, but we're also talking to more OEMs. We have a global range. And uh, as you mentioned, we are looking at where we can play in the EV value chain with a good brand uh, distribution and uh, definitely relationships uh, as EV penetration goes up. We have looked at the value chain and there are certain investments we have made. Uh, globally, we have made investment in a UK car charging company called Indra. And in India, we have tied up with a software as a service company. Uh, the board and uh, we are evaluating at other opportunities around the EV value chain. And hopefully we will uh, come up with a few uh, uh, moves there where we want to be a strategic uh, player. Can you tell us the other two OEMs whom you're in discussions with for EV fluids? Uh, we haven't, we won't be able to announce till we sign the contract, but I can tell you we're talking to uh, definitely the car OEMs and two-wheeler OEMs. So shortly we will uh, definitely come out with that. In Q4? Do you uh, think you... Yes, yes, in Q4, in Q4. In Q4 you'll sign up with. And will EV fluids remain a low margin business for you? When do you think it can start contributing uh, more to your margins? See, EV fluids is going to be a very small uh, part of the volumes. Uh, the core industry, the core lubricants is going to continue to grow 3 to 4% for the next 10 years, 15 years. As you know, penetration of vehicles, most of the uh, commercial vehicles, industrials, and even if you take other segments, the penetration of EV will happen. But uh, we see no uh, uh, lack of growth in the uh, traditional core lubricants. And uh, EV fluids will play, but I would be, I would, it would be a small percentage, single digit uh, percentage in terms of volumes. All right. Okay, Mr. Chawla, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us and talking about the demand on ground and the outlook going forward as well. That's the word coming in from Gulf Oil Lubricants. Uh, strong set of numbers and the commentary as well. We'll slip into a short break and get you more on markets and stock specific action. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back. Still tuned in to Midcap Radar on CNBC TV 18. Markets, they continue to be under pressure, but a couple of stocks which are on our radar. So Gale is one stock which I'm focusing on. The stock is not reacting much. It is flat, but there is an important update here. Uh, the company has planned to import ethane from the US. This in order to replace uh, their current feedstock. Feedstock basically means raw materials. Uh, they... Uh, currently use gas and naphtha and they want to diversify their raw material basket as well. This is for the petrochemical plants and what has been happening
happening is all these petrochemical players, they have been facing a lot of margin pressure because of the increased gas costs recently. And this is the reason why they want to diversify that particular supply chain as well. The company in a recent tender document said that in a bid towards diversification of the feedstock, it is looking to import ethane from ethane surplus countries with matured export terminal infrastructure. And this will be transported further through Gale's pipeline transportation network as well. Uh, while it will happen from 2026, where they seek to hire 20 very large ethane carriers uh, for 20 years. Uh, but the thing is, it is a long-term positive because remember, back in the day in 2014, Reliance Industries started uh, importing ethane for their petrochemical plants and it led to huge uh, cost savings for the company and led to margin improvement as well. So Gale is on a similar path and that's the reason it is an important news. The stock, though, not reacting to it. But if they do get a good price for this and are able to diversify their raw material basket, it is a long-term positive, Rima. Okay, interesting. Thank you very much uh, for that. Out of time on Midcap Radar from the entire team. Thank you for watching. But Inside Out is back. So after a very short commercial break, my colleagues Sonal and Nigel will be chatting with two management. Stay tuned.